Even though it's been only four months since I did my initial video on the Warp Terminal, they've so improved the app, I feel compelled to show you a bunch of new features that have been released in this short time. Now, I've organized the changes into four categories, customizations, ease of use, helps and safety checks, and error checking. Want a quick flyby? We'll cover renaming tabs, coloring tabs, save configurations, text wrapping, session navigation, fuzzy search matching, auto-completion, block selection, syntax highlighting, the new command inspector, universal input, command corrections, error checking. All right, let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. You know, the best thing I can say for all these warp improvements is they feel like the kind of features that are super obvious. Like, how did we not have all of these in the terminal in the past? And that really is a huge compliment to warp. They're thinking about the common use cases that developers face and just solving them with basic user interface interactions that you'd expect. And like I mentioned, I want to cover this in four different sections. And let's start with customizations. First of all, you can rename and color tabs now. So I can come up here and I could name this I don't know, front end or something like that. So maybe I have a front end tab and a back end tab or, you know, whatever else I'd want. At the same time, if I right click as well, I can come in here and just color this to a different color. And this is based on my selected theme. So you can see how here with this theme, I have this purple color, but you might have a different one depending on the theme you want. So you can color and rename tabs. And that gives you just a really quick understanding of what's going on in your terminal when you quickly take a glance. And one of the other cool features they've added is configurations. You can actually save groups of terminals and then quickly jump right back into them. Now, to save them, you'd simply come in here and hit Save, New Launch Configuration, and then you just give whatever your current set of tabs is a file name. And it saves this for you, creates the configuration, and then lets you look at it right away if you'd like to. Now, to actually launch one, you can do one of two things. You can hit Command, Control, and then you can hit L, and that will open up different ones you have available. The other thing you can do is hit Command P and just hit the pound sign, and that shows you all of those as well. And if you want to add a new one directly from here, you can just click plus and do that. Now down here, I've got a client that I've been working on. He's a screen printer. And if I open this up, you'll see I've got two different tabs here, the back end and the front end. I'm using Astro on the front end and Sanity on the back end. It makes it really easy. And that way I can just quickly switch between the two whenever I need to. Now let's move on to the ease of use improvements. This is really is where warp shines above other terminals. You have basic stuff, for instance, you can wrap now in terminals. So if I were to search for a workflow, I don't know, something like this, that's not quite long enough, but you can get the idea as I move, all this moves over for me. If you're used to working in VS Code or any other environment, you're used to switching quickly between different tabs that are available. Now you've got all the standard keyboard shortcuts, but you can also hit Command Shift P and see access to anything that you have open, not only in this window, but in any other windows as well. So for instance, you might have different instances of warp running and with Command Shift P, or you can just type the at sign when you're in the command palette, you can see anything else you have going and you can see here, it says this is the current session. Let's actually start typing some things in the terminal. You can see here, as I start typing, it gives me an idea of what I might want. And if I hit tab, it will show me actually in a little drop down list, everything I might want inside here. So like I could go into my documents and hit tab again. If you want this to show all the time though, you can actually toggle that on now. If I come over here and I open up my settings and then I jump over to features, you can now see that I can open completion menu as I type. So if I close this down, I come back down this way, all I have to do is start typing and immediately it shows me what I have available to me. Now this doesn't just work with changing directories. You can see if I jump inside here and to the Sanity project I was talking about a second ago, as I start typing, it gives me auto completions. Now as I'm typing, I may not spell everything correctly or include all the letters I need to. And you can see here that it now includes fuzzy searching automatically. And if you were really paying attention, you may have noticed that I have a alias for Git called AC. And you can see that this adds and commits something at the exact same time. And aliases as well are included in this auto completion menu. Now let's go ahead and create a new branch and I'll just call this new feature or whatever, something like that. But notice as I'm typing, it actually now also includes syntax highlighting by default. So as you're typing without any configuration, it's just gonna use your theme to configure a syntax highlighting for whatever you're typing. This splits up the command itself from its flags and its parameters. And again, no configuration needed on your part. Now, one other nice ease of use is if I come up here and I select this with my keyboard, I just have to hit command and the up arrow, I can now hit Control and M and open up the menu that comes with that. That allows me to copy the command or all those other things that you could do by clicking this little menu over here. But now you can do it just with Control and M, which is really nice. Now let's move on to helps and safety checks. 
One of the coolest things about Warp is it gives you access to a bunch of neat things. Like for instance, you can do an AI command search with control and the tilde. You can also use the up arrow like you would in other terminals to access your recent commands. In Warp, you also have access to workflows with control, shift, and R. You can access a bunch of workflows that have already been pre-created to do common tasks with all kinds of things like Docker and everything else. And of course, you can hit command P and search for everything, but they've actually replaced all of those, or not replaced them, but added in addition to them, just control and R. If you do that, it gives you a command search for all your history, all your workflows, and all your AI command search. Now to limit it, for instance, you can say workflows like this, and then you can start typing something if you'd like to. You can also come in here and do the same thing with history like this, and then search for something in your history. Or you can just start typing and it will pick the best thing for you. So let's say I'm saying, hey, how do I delete a branch? So how to delete a branch, all right? And translate into shell code using OpenAI, all right? So I tap that, and now immediately it gives me access to this command search. I hit command and enter, and it enters it in here. Now all I have to do is provide that branch I just created called new feature. And again, that auto pop-up menu is already giving me that. I hit over on my keypad and then I hit enter and it just automatically deletes that for me. Now let's say as I was typing this, I wasn't exactly sure what each of these things did. One of the cool things about this auto completion menu is it actually gives you a little preview of what you're doing here. But let's say I don't remember what like the D flag does and I've already moved on from there. Now what I can do is just come over here and hover over it and it actually tells me exactly what's going on. This is called the command inspector. Now the last thing I want to mention is just a few error checking things. So let's say I'm starting to type out a command and I hit get with two T's there. You can see I'm already getting it underlined to show me that I've typed something wrong. Or maybe I actually type get correctly, but I say get branchy, all right? And then I add and something else, all right? And if I do this, you're going to see that it, it actually detects, hey, this isn't exactly what you're wanting to do. Maybe this is the command. Do you want to insert this suggestion instead? And you can see that I can do that immediately, and then it gives me access to that command. So not only will it check for errors as you type and underline wrong words, but even if you barely mistype something, using AI, it does a really great job at figuring out exactly what you want it to type. I hope this quick flyby has shown you just how much Warp has improved even in the four months since I did that initial video. If you're interested in Warp, I've added a link below. And if you want a larger overview of how to use Warp, I'll include a link to my previous video as well in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.